Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from the conversations that I had with one of our dear brother. The message that he sent to me reads like this. Hello, my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? When I came here to South Africa, I did not have anything, my brother. At that time, I was still staying in Soweto, where my wife's, my late wife comes from. And in that same location, that was when I became friends with this other woman who was a teacher, whom I later sacrificed. This was after she had sold her house to me. And me and this woman at that time when my wife was still alive, we used to be very good friends because she was a professional and I was a professional as well. So she wanted to start a small private school. So since I was very good in accounting, I would come to her house, then I would tutor some students. But unfortunately, by the time that I sacrificed her, her dream had not yet come true. Me and this woman, we used to discuss about a lot of stuff. She was very interested in having these franchises, like to have her own KFC or McDonald's. But the problem was that the money that was needed, it was a lot of money. So there was no way she was going to find this money. So at that time, we started to discuss and she once asked me if it was possible for me to find out for her if there was any healer like in Zim who could actually make us to be rich. So I had never had that thought of becoming a ritualist. So one day when this woman told me that she wanted to give me a task whereby I would go back to Zim to find a traditional healer that could make us to be rich so that we can achieve these dreams of ours of owning like your KFCs and your McDonald's so that we can be rich. But my brother, I then asked this other traditional healer who is still my traditional healer about this stuff. And this man, he said that it was possible for me to have a tokoloshi or some certain kind of creatures that can give me money. So I said, it is fine. But at that time, I did not report back to that woman, the teacher from Soweto, because I wanted to see if this was going to work out because this healer, he had already given me some of the choices that I had to make. So it's either I was su supposed to sacrifice amongst my own relatives or I was supposed to sacrifice the blood of the people that did not share the same bloodline as me. And I knew that my wife was going to be the first one. So at that time, when my wife was still alive, even though we were still legally married, but I was still waiting to get my citizenship. So this traditional healer then said that I had to wait until I would have become a full citizen. Then I was then going to sacrifice my own wife because it was not going to make sense to sacrifice the woman who was going to make me to become like a South African. So we waited patiently with that traditional healer. The day that my citizenship came out, when I went to collect, I went straight to that traditional healer's place and I showed him the documents and he then blessed those documents. A traditional healer then said that now there was no need anymore for my wife to be alive because she had played her part and it was time for her soul to be taken by that traditional healer. So this healer then gave me some charms that were going to kill off my wife. So the creatures that the traditional healer gave me, I was then given a snake. I was given a tortoise and another funny creature that I cannot even properly describe because of all the animals that we know of, there is no animal that might even resemble this third creature that I was given by that traditional healer. So these creatures that were given to me when my life, when my wife was still alive, before I had started to make a lot of money, my wife each and every morning, she would wake up and her nipples will be swollen because these togoloshes of mine, they were busy like sucking on her breast as if they were little children that she would be breastfeeding when she was fast asleep. By the time that my wife passed away, almost all of her blood had been sucked up by this 
little creatures that was when they transformed themselves one became a snake one became a tortoise then this other one it became a creature that i can't even properly identify i was then told that these creatures i needed to find a place whereby i was going to keep them the traditional healer then told me that the rules of engagement were when i buy a house from someone who will be busy selling off their house then i have to sacrifice that person because this house needed to be protected by the spirit of that person who would have sold off the house to me because these creatures they need someone to look after them then this traditional healer then said who is in a better position to secure his or her own house than the person that would have sold off their property to you so so I then sacrificed that woman who was like my best friend who was from Soweto. I went to her and I told her that I wanted to buy her house from her. But she then said that, you know very well that I cannot sell this house to you because when I die, if it happens today that God takes my life away, then I want my daughters to at least know that they have a place to run to if something goes wrong in their marriage. And I want my grandkids to have a place to stay so no it is impossible for me to sell this house to you at that time she was not yet sick i went and i reported back the matter to that traditional healer who then said this is going to be easy i am going to cast a spell on her body and then she is going to get very sick she is going to get very sick and she is going to sell you this house at a cheaper price if she had agreed to sell you this house now at least she was going to enjoy the money but now she's not going to enjoy that money so that traditional healer then gave me some charms that i started to use against this old friend of mine she got so sick my brother and the day that she sold this house to me she was like on her deathbed when i went with my lawyers to her place when she signed the documents i'm not even sure she knew that this was what she was doing because she was just half dead she was not even able to communicate she could not even open her eyes anymore that is when she signed the documents and she sold off the house to me the kids were the ones who enjoyed this money so what they did not know was that the moment that their mother was signing off her property to me what was happening was that she was dedicating a life to me even right now this house it is still there in soweto but i have some tenants that stay there and i tend it to be sort of like a student accommodation and i and at that house there is one room where the ghost of this woman sleeps in and each and every time when i go to soweto when i just want to spend some time at my property i see her no one sees her ghost but it is only me sometimes she wakes up then she will start to clean outside of the yard then she will sweep the pavement or she'll be busy just sweeping the whole house and mopping the whole house no one knows that the ghost of that woman who was the owner of this house it stays at that same place but this ghost a spirit it stays in the ceiling so my brother this is what i did first to this woman and this was after i had sacrificed my wife but i loved my wife a lot but i didn't want to be poor i also wanted to be rich unfortunately my wife she had to become my sacrifice so she could not enjoy the money that i have so unfortunately my wife she had to become my sacrifice and there was no way she was going to be able to enjoy this money i then bought another property so when i bought this property i was then told that at my house that is where i am supposed to stay with the snake so this snake when it transformed itself it be it was like a little snake but now this snake it is very big it is as big as a car and it is very heavy and this snake i used to place it on the bed at night alone i was able to lift this snake alone but it reached a point whereby i could not even lift this snake anymore and this snake it once broke a bed that is how heavy this snake has become when i saw that this snake is too heavy for me i will then call that tortoise and the other creature then they would come and help me to 
lift up this snake and place it on top of that bed. I then called that traditional healer, who is a local traditional healer. He came and he said that in his entire life of being a Sangom, he has never seen something like this, a snake growing to be this big. So what pains me is that this man, he does not have a solution to this problem. So I do not know what is going to be happening if this snake becomes as big as the house that I have. Maybe he is going to tell me to move this snake. How am I going to move a snake that cannot be lifted? maybe by a forklift or something like that because it is too heavy then the other thing that happened was that i was then told that i needed to find the third house so i returned back home when i returned back home i tried to buy this other house from this other old man i had particularly selected him because of his old age i knew that if i was going to sacrifice him no one was going to suspect that I had sacrificed him because of his old age. So this man, he had his daughters that are in the United Kingdom. But those women, the way that they pray, they just do not know what they did to me. These women, they suspected that I was a ritualist and they told their father not to sell off the property to me. But I kept on pushing the old man and he wanted to sell this house to me because of the price that I was offering him. But one of that old man's daughter flew from the United Kingdom and I met up with her in Zim. But my brother, this woman, she is very powerful in prayer because I remember the day that I was supposed to meet up with her. I was unable to get off from my car because the moment that I saw her, I felt as if I had been thrown in a lake of fire. I felt like underneath my feet there was a fire that was burning. I started to sweat and I started to feel very dizzy and I told her that we were going to have this discussion another day but what she did not realize was that she had overpowered me because of the spirit that resides in her body. That is how I lost that property that I wanted to buy in Zim. This is my own story my brother. People can ask me why did I do such a thing? But I had to do this so that at least I can enjoy life whilst I am still alive. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear brother. Strange things do happen in this world, but how can you do such a thing to the woman who loved you, to the woman who was your wife? Then you say that, she had to die so that I can be rich. Strange things do happen in this world.